To help you with the, some of the abstractness of this notation, understand that we refer to the probability of A given B, and it's important to realize that that is different than the probability of B given A. For example, the probability of being a dog, given that you are a poodle, is not the same as the probability of being a poodle, given that you are a dog. So using this kind of notation requires some mental gymnastics. And especially when you're dealing with numbers, it's important to do the numbers. For example, the probability of being the President of the United States, given that you are a citizen, is much different than the probability of being a citizen of the United States, given that you are the President of the United States. The probability of being the president, given that you are a citizen, is about 1 out of 300 million. Whereas the probability of being a citizen, given that you are the president of the United States, is 1. You have to be a citizen to be a, the president of the United States. So transferring this to the disease hypothesis symptoms, we always refer by convention to the disease being A or the hypothesis being A and what we observe the symptoms as B uh, during this presentation. <laughs> so the probability of A given B is the probability of having a disease given the symptoms that you observe or the data that you observe. The probability of B given A is the probability of observing some symptoms given that you know that you have the disease. And these are completely different probabilities. So going to the scientific hypothesis, that we are always referring to as A, whereas what we observe, the data we collect, is always B. And uh, keeping it this simple will make it easier for you to decipher this. For example, the probability of having the disease apical periodontitis, given that you have bacteria, is not the same as the probability of having bacteria, given that you know you have apical periodontitis. In endodontics, we frequently mistake these two things as equal, and this is called the inversion of the conditional.